This slide shows the linkages between the compilers, assemblers, linkers uh, and the files which they produce in order to create an executable. Uh, since most of you are familiar with Turbo C++ environment and in the Turbo C++ environment everything is run through the ID, you actually might not have seen these individual pieces work together. So in Unix, uh, there are wrapper commands to just do everything together, but you also have the flexibility to execute each of these piece individually. So initially you will end up creating a program in say C or C++ or say any other language but for the moment just assume it's in C or C++. You take this program through a compiler. The compiler is going to generate an assembly. That generated assembly is going to be fed to an assembler and what the assembler does is it is actually going to take in this assembly and create an object file. Now object file is a perfectly valid uh, machine file that is the processor can go ahead and execute it but for the external symbol references. So what is meant by external symbol references is if you say have used any library functions then those functions code is not going to be present in the object code that is generated. So to remove the external symbol references you are going to use what is known as a linker. A uh, linker is going to pick up the code for all your external symbols and lump them together in one file and this file will be known as the generated executable. There are multiple ways in which the linker can operate and we will look at detail of those ways in the linker section. But for the moment just assume if your uh, linker is only pulling out the object code from the various libraries and clubbing it together to give you your executable. This executable you are going to run maybe through a debugger and you check if the results are fine then basically your program has developed and you stop. If the results are not fine then you go back and redo the C, C++ programming and go through the all these parts. So uh, in case of Unix actually uh, more often than not you just use a single compile command to do the compilation, assembly and the linking uh, together to produce the generated executable. Uh, later on as we gain more uh, comfort with these individual commands and also you want to have more control, we might end up doing the linking stage separately. However, it's very rarely if ever you want to do the assembly separately. And that only happens if you are writing some part of your program in assembly and that part of the program links with say other programs to produce the executable. So here is the real world output of the various stages which we discussed in the previous slide. Uh, these have been generated on a Intel platform. So the assembly is for the Intel uh, x86. So to begin with we have a test.c program. It does a hash include stdio.h and there is a printf hello world and then it does a return zero. I hope every one of you is uh, familiar with C programming and this program is uh, fairly simple for you not to require any explanation at this stage. So once this is part through the compilation stage, the test.s file is generated. A .s extension whether a small or a capital means that the file is assembly file and that's just a convention as we already know. We uh, the Unix utilities rely on the magic number of a file to figure out what it is. So as you can see here, uh, it has some sub L, move L kind of instructions. We don't really need to understand what these instructions are. But the uh, interesting part is that there is a call to put S. The printf uh, will invariably be converted to a put S function call. That is a final call which is responsible for writing the output. And since the put S call does not exist in uh, our test.c, it's a external function call. And this is after just doing the assembly. So once we uh, assemble, right, so previously was the generated assembly and once we assemble the file, pass it through the assembler, uh, we get a test.o. This is the object file. So it's very difficult to dump out object file, but if we do a, at least a disassembly, we would see the same uh, assembly code that we saw in test.c. But we can use another command which is known as nm and which is used for listing symbols in a particular file. And if we use nm on test.o, we see that there are two symbols. 
one is the main symbol which is the our int main function and the second is the putus symbol so in front of putus nm has actually written a capital u so what means is that this is actually unresolved as of now meaning it doesn't know where the code for putus is but at least the symbol is present there is a call to this which is present and next what we do we do the linking and after linking the executable is correctly created and all the symbols have been resolved so these are the various stages uh, which the compilation stage is going to go through and once you have gone through the later sections you could actually try these out yourself